Now there's something beautiful that happens in the build-up of this attack. And it's not just the patient passing of the ball around. I'm talking about Hazard slowing down to hold up the ball till James makes a run through the defense, ultimately unleashing this beautiful strike into the bottom left corner. This is a realistic tactic referred to as La Pausa, and it's something players like Iniesta and Messi are particularly good at. To translate this into a football simulation, Pes rewards patient passing of the ball around while looking out for player runs that make all the difference. Mohamed Salah and the shots! The end result is a more deliberate and infinitely rewarding gameplay that reflects how teams can counterattack in real life, where only players good on the ball can make impactful dribbles, while their teammates try to place themselves in more threatening positions. It's one. This is my review of the realism of PES 2020's gameplay. Passing in PES 2020 is just as good as it's always been. Whether it's a way a left-footed player will swerve the ball in using the outside of his boot from the right wing, or even just the psychology of passing, where pressing your superstar AI opponent will affect their passing accuracy as they realistically scramble to get rid of the ball. And the more persistently you block their options, the higher the likelihood they gift you the ball. A tactic that works particularly well with teams that use the Gagan pressing tactic. Unlike FIFA, PES makes 1-2 passing even simpler and more effective by making it happen when you simply hold down the L1 button when passing, which causes your player to burst forward after making the pass. And while I love how occasionally the AI will misjudge their player's runs or position on the long pass, it's sometimes frustrating to watch a team like FC Basel pull off this tick attacker just as good as Prime Barca, with excessive pinballing that still isn't as bad as it was in PES 2018. But yes, the perfectly weighted through passes are satisfying to watch, as is the way you can break free from your mark with a well-timed push of the ball. These satisfying ball physics are even more evident when moving the ball across the pitch, which correctly adapts the swerve of the ball to the way the player performs the cross, which depends on their position when attempting the cross. Like here Carvajal moves into the pitch this time, leading to an outside-in swerve of the ball that is just beautiful to watch. And just look here at the subtle way the ball reacts to Kante's last-minute block of Salah's shot, as it spins realistically and swerves beyond Kepa's reach. I actually find that this year you don't have to be near the corner to cross the ball into the area, which opens up way more attacking options when moving forward. And just like in the Champions League semi-final with Mane picking up a ball off a clumsy clearance, lobbing the ball forward and hoping for a straight defensive header is a valid and realistic way towards picking up the ball in an advanced position with minimal build-up. With realistic air battles happening all over the pitch, this all translates to better heading physics, which while not as easy as 2018's game, it is possible to score from headers again this year unlike last year. Especially from set pieces where you get to choose if you want your players to move away, then dash into the area, In with a or if you want to target the player on the far post. Who is the target now? He's having a look at what's available. Up with a Although I must note that the header direction animation occasionally needs some improvement. Speaking of set pieces, scoring from them might be a tad too easy this year, but they remain superior to FIFA's system and way more satisfying to pull off. Shooting in PES has long been the industry gold standard, and combined with the new interplayer physicality this year, with players struggling to strip the ball off of Mane, and the realistic crossfake from Trent to cut back to Mane, shooting is even more satisfying in PES 2020. A large part of the payoff is the way you lead up to the shot. So for instance, Salah here doesn't have enough time to hit the target, or is unable to shake off a defender early enough. Your chances of hitting the target are low if you're facing the wrong direction, or if you're using your non-dominant foot. 
or if the angle is just too acute. Hits one. Unlike in FIFA where it seems that any left footed shot by Salah sails into the net regardless of how far or how tight the angle is, and it quickly starts losing its visual appeal. And this would reduce the deficit! In PES, you need to work to get the ball on the correct foot. Gets away from his opponent. And when you have the right direction, the right player, and the right dominant foot, scoring a finesse shot feels way more satisfying. Money! And especially if he needed to pull off a skill move to get into that position. Oh, that's meat. He's had a shot. Those skills can range from Pess's new ball trapping dribble, which worked better in the demo, but in the full game, fluid churning seems to be more of a privilege to a select few. Skills can range from a subtle fake to a feint to your non-dominant foot, or, or kind of to a chop change in direction, which is very useful to cut into the pitch, or just a simple touch in the right direction, to that beautiful nutmeg Shaq uses to cut inside. My favorite skill of all is actually not touching the ball by holding R1 and R2 and just letting it roll. This has been unique to PES for several years, and it's called the Super Cancel. Like how Firmino lets the ball roll before unleashing the straight shot into a tight angle. Or the way Asensio just lets the ball roll past his mark before Benzema forces this incredible save from the keeper. Which brings me to the goalkeeping, which along with shooting, has always been a strong point in the PES series. Keepers just have realistic reflexes, sometimes godly in nature, aided by a wide range of animations that cover various situations, like how Navas rushes back to clear the ball off his line, or the way Hennessy anticipates a cross from Trent, but gets a shot instead, so he uses his legs to clear the ball. PES 2020 takes recovery time to the next level, and you can see keepers scrambling to get the ball out of the danger zone, fresh off another save. They react faster to deflections, and can even grab the ball while on the ground before fully recovering, like how Kepa actually rolls over to grab Genie's rebound off the post. This is proving to be a very good spell. And here you can see he's kind of surprised by a ball rebound before flicking it back to the corner. Keepers seem to have more header options when clearing the ball off of the line this year. I mean, look how low Allison goes here. Found out and stopped. Nobody's going to argue with that. Chipping the ball is appropriately challenging, making it even more rewarding when you properly time your ball pushes and it works. One issue persisting from the demo is the lack of appropriate lateral movement, which we see here as the keeper holds his ground while Mane moves laterally, and again here with Salah. But Konami seemed to have fixed the force with which the ball rebounds off a flying save, which was way too excessive in the demo. PES 2020's new physicality engine becomes very clear the first time you play the game. And while it's a work in progress, you can clearly see the tug of war going on, as players struggle to maintain possession or strip it away. Although, there seems to be little in the way of repercussions from all the pulling in this new engine, especially if it happens in the penalty box, as opposed to when it happens outside of the box, where the referee will award a foul. Referees do a better job calling out collision fouls, even those off the ball preventing a passing opportunity, although they still seem to be inconsistent in calling them out. I've spoken a lot about the fouls in my demo review, where the referee kept calling out several non-fouls, forcing you to relearn how to steal the ball. Well, the team at Konami kind of fixed that. So, for instance, this simple steal is no longer a foul in the full game, and advantage play will forget the foul after you take three touches of the ball. And sometimes the referee will just forget to award you the foul if nobody touches the ball. But Konami seems to have gone a little bit overboard with the fix, making it a little too easy to steal off the ball without repercussions. And while there is a clear lack of straight reds in this game, including in one-on-one -on -one situations with the keeper, this year penalties can be awarded against keepers. 
And as in the demo, the referee will not give a yellow for tactical sliding fouls against the players on the break. But in all fairness, I found that many referee calls looked wrong till I examined them in the replays. Like here, this looks like Pogba causing a foul, but when you look closely, you can see that Pogba actually gains possession of the ball before being fouled. And here, this looks like a fair tackle by Big Verge, till you can see his right leg actually clashing with Ramsey's right before stealing the ball. And here you can see Newcastle's player beating Shakiri to the ball on the replay. Overall, refereeing needs work, but seems to be moving in the right direction. I remember seeing this goal compilation from FIFA, where the user figured out how to score by flicking the ball overhead while performing a rainbow kick. And he actually said it was more reliable than the regular shot at the goal. This comes in stark contrast to PES, where scoring a boombastic goal takes a lot of patience, and it's just more rewarding when all the right circumstances come together while you enjoy the perfect contact between a swinging player's foot and a ball with realistic physics tied to it. And with all the downsides mentioned here, they pale compared to FIFA 20s, despite its beautiful presentation. So that is it, I hope you've liked this gameplay review and see you in the next video.